Well, good morning, folks. It's Richard Gene, the fishing machine here. This morning, I'm going to show y'all a jig right there that will catch about anything that swims. Stay with me. This is a tiny fluke made by Zoom Bait Company, and it's uh, they come in 20 packs. They're three inches long. Let's take one of them out and look at them. This bait right here, like I've mentioned, catches anything that swims. Very realistic presentation. Very realistic color. In fact, this is my favorite color, and it's uh, called bait fish. That's my favorite color right there. I get more strikes on it than anything when I'm fishing this style. Now, I've been getting a lot of questions. What do you use to dye your tail? Well, here's one that's already been made made up. That's a 1 16th of an ounce um, jig head uh, made by a Crappie Pro. And uh, I then have this tail dyed chartreuse. And let's go ahead and do that right now. All I'm doing is putting just a little bit, just enough for a little bit of flash, just like that. This bait right here represents a uh, thread fin shad. Their tail is slightly a chartreuse color. Not that deep a chartreuse, but close, close to that. So that's what these fish are thinking it is. And, uh, excuse me, folks, <laughs> this is called spike it dipping glow okay and it has a garlic scent which you don't have to have they make this stuff um different colors uh, but a uh, chartreuse is what i like on this particular bait right here for the reason that i just told you because yellowtails or threadfin shad have a yellowtail it matches matches that particular bait fish but yeah Spike it, dip and glow, garlic scented. That's what I use. Now these jig heads are done prefabricated. Let me show you what I'm talking about. With a pair of side cutters, I already cut off the lead from right here, which was right from right here to about right here, folks. I took and I snipped it off. That way, all I have is hook shank. Now, this material that you see right here is dental floss. Uh, Non-waxed dental floss. That's all it is. And what I do is I start right here and I wrap all the way to about the bend. And then I go back up one more time. So, I'm wrapping it twice. Right here, I'm tying the knot, which you can't hardly see. Cutting it off with scissors and getting uh, a cigarette lighter, heating it up, and the tag end just disappears. Melts into here. So, so it's very neat, very neat deal right here. But another thing that I'll do, and the reason why I'm doing all this, folks, and I'll rig up several baits, old 10 or 12, and usually won't use them all. Usually I won't use about three or four in a day's a day of fishing because of the way that I'm rigging right here. Um, I take this part off because what it does on a lot of these small baits like this one, you can see how thin that is. If you leave a collar, it swells this part of it after you rig it up, swells it up. And it, and it actually mis, mis shapes it, uh, distorts it to where on the fall, when you pick this bait up and it's falling back, it don't fall clean and it don't look natural. So that's uh, another reason why I cut it off. Another reason is to make this bait last longer. It won't tear right here by having this plain hook shank go through it see it's like a needle going through it watch this i'm going to rig it up right through the center 
right through that dead blame center and then come out. Push it back. Now you can see how straight that is. Well, it's pretty straight. Might be a little crooked. But usually when I rig them up, I make sure they're very, very straight. Very straight. But anyway, you get the gist of it. Pull it back. Now this is the best glue right here, folks, that I've ever used. This Loctite Super Glue. And it's gel. Ultra gel control. This works with regular plastics like these. It works with Nico baits. And it works with Z-Man baits. Okay. Without any chemical problems. A lot of super glues will cause chemical reactions. But this one won't. This one right here. When it comes to Elastec, it works great with it. Um, and baits like this. I just want to go, go into that and let y'all know. But anyway, we got it skint back just like that. And it don't take much of this stuff. But what I'll do is just take a little and just wipe it all the way around like that. Don't take much. And just push it back. Now what this will do right here. If you notice how clean that looks. Right here. The top part of the, the actual jig is not distorted. Or the plastic part of the jig is not distorted. It's the same shape that it is coming out of the pack. That gives it a. When you pick that bait up and it falls back. It gives it a very realistic fall. Another thing about this. This bait right here, this tiny fluke, it never falls back the same. A lot of times it'll fall and twist, then hit the bottom. Sometimes it'll twist a couple times and hit the bottom. Sometimes it'll actually, if you jerk it up real quick and it falls back, it'll roll, which is a good action too. And then hit. It never falls the same um, after you pick it up and let it fall. And that makes it look very realistic. When you couple that up with a loop knot, you got a great situation. You got a bait that'll catch anything or virtually anything that swims in the river. All right, folks, let's take this jig to the dam and let's catch a few. Whoa! Alright folks, we're here at our first stop right here. First place I'm going to fish. This is a sow belly rod, six and a half feet long, um, light action. And I'm using a 2500 size Fago LT2500 Daiwa. It's a Daiwa reel. Eight pound test braid and I have six pound test fluorocarbon right here i have a leader about uh it's probably about seven feet long now this bait right here is tied with a loop knot and the reason is i want all the action i can get out of it i'm here in about 14 15 feet of water there's been some big crappie right down through here folks and they won't stay long because when the shad leaves the crappie will leave i just missed one right there sure did Ooh, and I'm glad I brought three rods with braid. Every one of those rods back there has got, got braid. It's going to take it today. You're going to need some sensitivity. No doubt. With the wind blowing like this. There he is. I got that fish. I got that crappie. It's a good one, too. I mean a good one. We'll net this one. We will net him. Ooh, what a big crappie. Mm, that's going to be some good fillets. I knew they were there. And that's what those bigger baits will do for you. They'll catch you those bigger fish. My goodness. Strong fish right there. Look at there. 
first crappie of the morning. Big old black crappie too. Let's put him in the bucket. Let's see how long he is. He ain't very long, but he's thick. He's not but 11 and probably 11 and 3 eighths long, but my goodness, he's thick. Just a beautiful Tennessee River fish right there. And there he goes. We're going to put him in the bucket. Depth. I found the depth. They're not uh, quite as deep as I thought they was. They're about 10 feet deep. I was actually fishing below them there for a little bit but it didn't take me long to figure it out and i wasn't working that bait very i was working it real slow there's another fish that might have been a now there's some white bass in here and i may end up keeping a few of them today there he is that's a crappie too that fish hit it on the fall Man, if that's a crappie, it's a good one. I don't know, folks. Nah, this ain't no crappie. This ain't no crappie. But that fish wasn't fighting. When I first stuck him, he was fighting, but like a big crappie would. Had a lull about him. But it's acting like a catfish or something. It could be a drum. Could be a drum. I'm not sure. No, it's a catfish. <laughs> no wonder. Well, I'd be dying. That fish was suspended. I'm going to catch a catfish every time out here, folks. I mean, sometimes I show them, sometimes I don't. But this is a big channel cat. Yeah, look at there, what a channel cat. And that fish was suspended. Cause he hit that jig about six feet, seven feet from the bottom. Come here, golly, what a channel cat. For these parts, that's a big one. Sure is, that was a lot of fun. That is a lot of fun, folks. Uh, I do not care what species I catch as long as I'm catching fish. And I'm gonna have to have my plars. Folks, let's let him go. That fish was way up in the water column. And the reason is he's feeding on them shad just like everything else. I'll get positioned where I can face the wind. You can have the most, the best boat control is going to be facing the wind. You can control the boat a lot better. And another thing is you're bringing that bait down the same position as the fish are, are, are sitting. There's fish. Golly. This is a big one right here, folks. Hope y'all can hear me. This is a big one. <laughs> big sauger. I'm excited now. Uh. Yep. There we go. Big old long son of a gun. There's another keeper. Sauger and crappie. Nothing like it. I hope y'all can hear me. <laughs> There's a fish. I just picked up on it. <laughs> Doggone thing is fighting now. I just picked up on it after letting it sink and that fish was there. Big white bass. Come on up here, boy. My, my, my. 
There ain't nothing wrong with that. Let's put him in a bucket. I tell you, it's been a long time since I've kept all these kind of fish right here, but but uh, I have some neighbors that loves them. Mama Sue, she loves them, so shoot. It don't hurt to keep fish. Selective harvesting is, is really important, and I believe in that, conservationist that I am, and I'm a big one. But now, there's another one. There's some fish out there. My, 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 I believe these are white bass. There's a fish. Mm -hmm. Look here, folks, another crappie. That's a big son of a gun right here. Look at there, look at there, look at there. Let's put him in the bucket. That's a good fish right there. My goodness. Ooh. I tell you what. That bait right there, don't fail me. Woo-wee, folks. I had to get off the water. The temperature started really dropping. It's going to get cold tonight. 24 degrees tonight. Right now, you can feel that temperature dropping and dropping. The fish, more or less, just cut off. They quit biting, so it's time to go home. Caught a, big, a good mess of fish, crappie, sauger, white bass. Going to take them home and clean them. Good eating. Real good eating. Hey, I'm going to say this. Thank y'all for everything y'all have done. God bless each and every one of y'all. Hey. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, and to remember, go fishing when you can, because it's good for you.